Representative Steve Lebsack got kicked out of the House today. First Colorado legislator to be expelled in more than a century. He tearfully played the victim and said his mistake was that he didn't hire a public relations firm. The testimony suggests Lebsack's actual mistake was being a serial sexual harasser. As Lebsack's alleged victim celebrated his removal, Lebsack's secret plan emerged. An hour before his expulsion, Lebsack had switched his voter registration from Democrat to Republican, making it likely that Republicans could pick his replacement. Politics guy Brandon Rit Ritterman witnessed seven hours of often emotional testimony today. Kyle, I have been covering legislatures for 16 years. I've never seen anything like this. We had members sharing personal stories of rape in their own families. We had two sitting members of the House of Representatives admit they've been wearing bulletproof vests for weeks because that's how scared they were of Steve Lebsock. And when we all showed up at the beginning of the day, no one really knew how this vote was going to go. Uh, Representative Lebsock did take the well a few times. He tried to poke some holes in some theories about the investigation into his case. It was unconvincing. There were two things that I think swayed the outcome of this vote and brought Republicans on board. One of them was the argument over retaliation because of a dossier, a manifesto, if you will, 28 pages that described the sex lives of some of the accusers printed out by Representative Lebsock and put in the mailboxes of accusers. That won over a lot of people. Then there was what we mentioned about the bulletproof vest. That was a very powerful moment in the building, and it speaks to how disappointed some people were. Cassie Tanner, one of the accusers, told us she was starting to lose her faith in this place. Completely renewed faith. You know, I when I walked in this morning and people asked me how I was doing, I said, I've always loved walking into this building, but Today, I dreaded it and um, had almost grown to hate this place and this room. And now I'm proud to be here again, and I'm proud of the work that they did today because it was hard but necessary. So we've just witnessed something today that hasn't happened in 103 years in the state of Colorado. And as you pointed out, Kyle, just before the vote, that party switch took place. I'm going to bet that that's going to end up in a courtroom before a replacement is picked. And Brandon, one fair question is whether Republicans who came around to the idea of expelling Lebsock knew that he was giving them a little gift on the way out. Uh, well, apparently he printed out the little record from the website of changing his party affiliation and dropped it right on the minority leader's desk. Um, the minority leader, Patrick Neville, told me he was pretty stunned by that. Uh, it didn't affect the outcome of his vote. He was one of the handful of no votes in this case um, to begin with, though. Brandon Ritterman, crazy day at the Capitol. Thank you. Our next question comes from Joe Martin, who's confused about why there are political caucuses on Tuesday. Joe writes, I thought we voted to get rid of them, but now I'm getting notices to attend mine. Joe, voters put a caucus block on the presidential campaign, going with open primaries instead. But we still have caucuses for the governor's race and others. Candidates will have the choice between collecting signatures to petition onto the ballot, or they can try to get through this caucus, a process explained by our Marshall Zellinger. It's as grassroots as politics get, meeting in a classroom or gym and convincing your neighbors which candidate to support so that your candidate can qualify for the primary ballot in June. Democrats and Republicans caucus differently. This is the process Democrats go through. When you walk into your small precinct gathering on Tuesday, you'll be asked to reveal which candidate for governor you prefer. Now just know your choice for governor may not be part of this process because if they're collecting signatures like Donna Lynn, they won't be an option. Four have said they will go through the caucus process, so if you support Kerry Kennedy, you'll be asked to join other supporters on one side. Mike Johnston on another, Jared Polis over here, Noel Ginsburg right here. Anyone undecided is then wooed for their support. This happens because the caucus process is three steps. What you just watched us describe is step one. In our Democrats example, the more support a candidate has at the precinct caucus on Tuesday, the more supporters or delegates they'll have picked to go to step two the smaller county assembly, and the better chance they'll have delegates at the even smaller state assembly. That's where they need the votes to qualify for the ballot. 
The Republican process is a bit more loose. They'll send delegates from step one on Tuesday to step two, maybe because you support a certain candidate or maybe because you're curious what step two is like. Kyle, really think of these like the nesting dolls, mm -hmm. that Tuesday is step one, the caucus that anybody can really go to, but you have to take part in Tuesday to go to the county assembly, okay. and it's really the smaller one, the state assembly, that makes the most important decisions. Those are the people who will end up on the ballot as long as they didn't go through the petition process. And by the way, since I name dropped the Democrats who are going to be in the caucus process, I should probably tell you that it's Cynthia Kaufman, Lou mm -hmm. Gator, Greg Lopez, and Steve Barlock going through this process for, for the, the Republicans. Republicans. Wait a second, are these Russian nesting dolls? They are. are they meddling? <laughs> they're, they're meddling in the election. All right, just take your Russian meddling dolls out of here. Thank you, Marshall. The Denver Public Schools principal who made unsubstantiated allegations of racism against a small town football team resigned today. There is no indication Nick Dawkins' departure from Manuel High School has anything to do with his smearing of Weld Central last year. A resignation letter posted on a Manuel Facebook page does not say why Dawkins is leaving. DPS, which stood by Dawkins throughout his discredited claims of racism, offered more glowing words about him today as he resigned. Stay tuned as we work to confirm why he left. Nolan Olson's job was keeping Coloradans safe on the roads. He worked for CDOT and he was out filling potholes last month when he was hit and killed. Today, a procession taking Olson's body from the metro area where he passed away at a hospital back down to Pagosa Springs where he lived and worked. CDOT is hoping the rolling memorial down 285 also served as a safety plea to drivers. And all we ask the public to slow down, let us do our job so we can be safe and all of us can return to our families every night just like everybody else does. If that personal plea is not enough motivation for a driver to slow down and give our maintenance crew space, it's also a violation of the state's move over law, a fine, four points on your license. A Coloradan dies of an opioid overdose every 26 hours, perhaps even more frequently than that because that statistic is from three years ago, the most recently available numbers. Students who know those statistics on a personal level are responding with a very personal action. They're writing letters to the Drug Enforcement Agency. Okay, I need to see your notebooks open to your homework. I'm Daniel Cervantes. We're at Jefferson Junior Senior High School. My name is Odalia Serrano. I'm impressed. The class that we're teaching here is called Literacy Acceleration. Okay. And we're always trying to find projects that will uh, engage them. This class wrote letters to different agencies. The reason I am writing you this letter is... There's a polling going on with opioid and heroin. They chose either an organization or an individual to write. And I would like to bring your attention to a very disturbing crisis in America. And I'm a little upset with what's going on. Two of the students, Odali Serrano and Daniel Cervantes, chose the DEA. I want to start by saying that drugs are really dumb. The reason I'm doing this is because we care about America. I remember uh, one class period they said, uh, you're not going to send these off, are you? And I said, of course I'm going to send these off. Opioid is a serious public health issue. Over 64,000 people have died in one year. How can we help these people? We wrote old-fashioned letters and we mailed them off. A couple like weeks later, I got like a package from the DEA. There was a knock on the door and a student assistant came in with these two huge envelopes from the Drug Enforcement Agency. They wrote uh, a letter back to me telling me how they were impressed. I was surprised because I didn't, I didn't really think like the DEA was going to actually like read that letter. Out of all the people in our class, I was the one that got chose. So I was pretty surprised. So I, I'm really proud of these two students. How a bike shop has ended up in the middle of the gun control debate and an invitation to conversation with some Coloradans who are often ignored because they don't have a voice. That's next. The sunshine was out in full force today. Wasn't this just a great winter day here in Denver? 70 degrees, just shy of that record of 74 set in 2009. Tonight, we're going to be looking at comfortable temperatures down to the low 30s with mostly clear skies. A nice night for the eastern plains and even up in the mountains, not too cool either. High pressure building in. That's going to keep us dry for one more day. Kick up the winds, bring us the heat. But then that storm system out to the west, it's bringing feet of snowfall to California's high country. Oh, that moves into Colorado. Don't worry. It won't be quite as fierce and ferocious for us. 
but it will deliver a bit of snow come Sunday. As far as the winds go, red flag warnings will continue with the high fire danger for most of eastern Colorado into eastern Adams and Arapahoe counties too. Douglas Elbert County included in that one tomorrow. 72, how about that? Mostly sunny skies our first weekend of March. Looking pretty good. We're going to be in the upper 70s in Lamar, Springfield too, 40s for Leadville and 50s near the Vail Valley and in through Steamboat. A cool off coming our way as that storm system moves in, but I did take out the snowfall. Don't think we'll see really much of that on Sunday. If anything, just a brief cool off and some even stronger winds for the start of the work week. 40s on Monday and Tuesday with the winds just ripping out there. We'll be back to the 50s and 60s by the middle of next week with nothing but sunshine, Kyle. Speaking of nothing but sunshine, if you told me you were wearing that dress, I would have worn the matching jacket. You know I have it. You've heard about some stores ceasing sales of some types of guns. REI went farther, dropping Camelback water backpacks just because they're made by a company that also makes guns. Bike Shop in Boulder led the way on that weeks ago. Nelson Garcia has the story. In a place for bikes, not bullets, co-owner Justin Hazy is taking a stand. We've been getting product from them for over 12 years. Uh, their products are amazing. They're top in their industry. So it was a real challenge to uh, um, make this decision. Boulder Cycle Sport will stop selling popular lines like Giro, Camelback, and Bell. It was a good portion of our helmet and shoe business. Because they are owned by a company called Vista Outdoor. With the name like Vista Outdoors, we tied it to camping gear. In addition to camping, Hazy found out Vista Outdoor also owns several gun-related companies, including one called Savage Arms, a brand that proudly brags about ammo and weaponry on YouTube. Putting uh, assault rifles and you know that type of equipment in the hands of civilians is, you know, it's it's not what we're about. Hazy knows his stand won't sit well with all cyclists and customers out there a decision he actually made before the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Our minds had already been made up, but we that was just some affirmation. He knows this will hurt financially. How many helmets got decals? But he wants to make sure his place for bikes has absolutely nothing to do with bullets. As a company, me and my business partners, we won't compromise our core values or um, profits. For next, I'm Nelson Garcia. Vista Outdoor isn't saying anything on, anything on this, despite prodding from REI, no statement from Vista. There are some Coloradans who would like a word with you, people who use computers to talk. You can chat or you could just listen as they put on a show. You're invited next. You're invited to go see a production of The Snow Queen in Parker over the weekend, a play put on by the, some of the young women you met here through their public service campaign, trying to convince us not to shy away from conversations with them just because they use computers to speak. When I go on to the stage this weekend to perform in The Snow Queen, it is going to be an incredible experience not just because of the hard work I am doing to prepare, but also because of what so many others are doing to help me. Hi, my name is Savannah, and I am a founding member of Let's Talk. One of the missions of Let's Talk is to educate our communities so that everyone will feel comfortable interacting with individuals who use AAC devices. Our full inclusion play has done a lot to reinforce Let's Talk's mission. Julie Rozick and I'm the director for the Snow Queen production. Uh, it's unique in so many ways. We have uh, phenomenal acting happening with people who are using devices to communicate. Four of our 18 actors are people that use augmentative communication, and what that means is they use technology to communicate. The rest of our actors are all verbal speakers, and what our mission was with this production was giving people who may have very limited opportunities the opportunity to participate in an activity that they've always wanted to participate. In. I've wanted to try acting for a long time, and once the opportunity came along, I went for it. Throughout my life, I have faced so many other physical challenges that my body has to deal with due to living life in a wheelchair. Trust me, some days are better than others. Elizabeth has a line. 
the cleverest prince there ever was. I'm the mom of two actors in the play. For one of my daughters, uh, the older daughter, Elizabeth, she uses her AAC device, so her communication device. So for me, what that entails is programming the device and kind of um, just practicing with Elizabeth what her cues are. She's never done a play before. So she has to know when to say her line. So for her to say her line is pushing the button um, on her communication device. That can be a little bit difficult for Elizabeth because she doesn't process language as easily as maybe you or I do. Um, so for her, it's a little bit more of the audio with the physical. So she hears Here's the cue, and then she has to have some sort of physical touch to remind her to push the button. Otherwise, it would just take a really long time. It would take her an extra probably 10 to 15 seconds, which in the world of plays is just enormous. So, Well, I think I was nervous just because they weren't like everybody else. But now, the, getting to experience this play with them, it totally changed my perspective of how to see the world and how to see everybody else. When I met some of these young people and understood how hard they have to work to have a voice, I was so proud to meet them, so proud to learn the many ways that they seek to engage in the world. Your dreams for your kid changes when you find out that there's something wrong. Um, something wrong with them. You know, when you're pregnant and you, you think, oh, they're going to be a doctor or a lawyer or a princess or whatever they want to be and you just want to support them. But then when you find out that they not, might not make it to adulthood um, or they might have these very big physical um, and communication limitations, really it changes, it, it whittles it down to, I just want them to have friends. I just want them to be happy um, and I just want them to belong because that's all any of us want to do. Um, and when you view life that simply something like this where she is viewed as a person and she does have friends that's all I've ever wanted for her thank you so much for coming this evening we appreciate your support of our foundation that play is being performed at Pace Schoolhouse Theater in Parker over the weekend there are tickets available and we have details in the next section of 9news.com it is Friday. Time for your good news. And the feedback tonight is not for me. It's for one of Representative Lebsock's accusers. Colfax, the concrete river, the traffic never stops. Right now we are at Hollywood's Barbershop, 2400 East Colfax. My good news right now is it's just good to be in Colorado. You know, we're having some good weather right now and family's doing well, that's always a good. Good news is that I'm trying to stay healthy. And I got a pretty good report on my health. My good news is being uh, healthy, got my strength, kids being healthy, being able to get up every morning and make some money to support my family. That's good. My health is very great. I uh, joined the membership across the street and uh, it's been working out for me real great. Another very good thing that happened when I moved here, I met my wife, which is a Colorado native. Met her the first month I was out here, June of 98. We got married of, in uh, February of 99, and it's been awesome. We just celebrated our 19th year of anniversary. Uh, I try to stay positive 24-7. Try to let no one steal my joy away from me. That's the way life should be, you know, just do a positive thing, positive thing every day. Being positive will guide you on a path towards your whatever you're trying to accomplish. If you can go through and fight through the negatives, you will win every time. Good news indeed. Barbara Northcross sent us the feedback that she sent to State Representative Faith Winter. I doubted your claim at first, but after listening to lawmakers who are wearing bulletproof vests and 11 claims, I now believe you wholeheartedly. I am sorry I didn't believe you, but now I am behind you and wish you the best. See you next time.